What happens when I, I have a bountiful eye? It moves me. It moves you. Because when you get a bountiful eye, you don't stand still. It moves you in the direction you want to go. And you start going towards what you believe for. If it's an education, a career, a business, huh? Whatever, a better life, a better wig, whatever it is. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot, Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. And now, our A Father's Heart broadcast. We're talking about expecting kingdom manifestation this year. Expecting kingdom manifestation. Everybody say it. Expecting kingdom manifestation. In fact, I declare that this year you will experience more kingdom manifestation this year of God's healing power, His deliverance, His breakthrough power, His miracle working power on your behalf greater this year than ever before. Come on, receive that. But you got to expect it. Somebody say expect it. Expect it. Believe it and then you shall what? Receive, receive it. Look with me here. Look with me here in the book of Romans uh, 15, 13. It says, now the God of hope. The God of who? Hope. Or the God of what? The God of expectation. Because God is a God of expectation. So now the God of expectation fill you with how much joy? All. all joy. So then also all joy, all what? Peace. That he'll fill you with all joy and peace. Man, I mean, he, he wants to do something big in your life. All joy and peace in believing. Now, I want you to underline that. Circle the word all, underline joy, peace. Put brackets around in believing. See, you need to increase. Believe and you shall receive doubt and you will do without. You've got to start making, increasing the commitment of your area of believing. Look what it says, in believing. Why? that you may abound in what? Hope. hope or abound in expectations. Glory to God. I'm believing at Calvary Christian Center this year, every person that's going to this ministry is going to abound in expectation. See, if I can get you to start expecting, stretching, believing for God to do things like you never had before, then you're going to see God manifest himself on your behalf because he's the God of expectation. And then he says he, he's, he wants you to abound in believing uh, in, in this area of expectation because he's ready to manifest himself on your behalf. And I don't know about y'all, but I receive that. I receive him abounding or manifesting himself on my behalf. Look what it says, that, he, that she said, that you may abound in believing, uh, that you may, uh, 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 said in peace, believing, uh, say in all joy and peace in believing, and that you may abound in hope. Abound in it. Amen. Come on, push your neighbor and say, abound in it. Abound. 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 Look what he says. Look at it. At all the things he talks about, he says, and, and, and uh, uh, there's a lot of things about faith and talk about love and hope all through the Bible. But here he says, I want you to abound in this. I want you to abound in the area of your expectation. In other words, don't let nobody intimidate you for expecting God to show up on your behalf. All right, that's right. <clears throat> Don't let nobody intimidate you for being a believer, and believers are always believing. Yeah. Do I got any believers here tonight? Yeah. All right. So he says, and then he says, I thought it was interesting, he says, through the power of the Holy Ghost. In other words, you need the power of God to help you in your stand when you're expecting to believe, because I, I can't tell you that when you start expecting that you are not going to have some opposition. The enemy is going to oppose you. He wants to discourage you. 
He wants to do everything he can to stop you from believing and say, oh, what the heck, you know, it ain't nothing ever going to change, you know. I ain't never going to get no job. I ain't going to never get no spouse, no husband, or I ain't going to never get healed. You know how people just get so negative because things don't happen for them as quick as they want to, but the enemy is warring against you because he does not want you to abound in this area because once you get one, then you know it's they pretty soon the domino effect to start working on your behalf. So you got you to gotta, you gotta abound in expectation, abound in it. And so I, 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 I'm telling you that that's why you need the Holy Spirit. You need that deutimous power, that miracle working power, that enabling power to help you to be able to stand through the toughest times when you're expecting and you close, the closer you get sometimes, the tougher the, 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 the gale winds start blowing against you. And I was out on the lake one time with my wife and some other people. And man, I tell you, that, that, the winds came up on that boat. And boy, we, it, it, was, it was, looks really bad for us. And, uh, and we started singing, and I turned to praise worship music up. And Philip was, but he was singing like nobody business then. Cause he was, <laughs> but you know, that's at the time, you know, sometimes we don't abound in, I, in, in, like in our praise and thanksgiving until we start going through right, something. Right, right. But I'm just telling you, uh, times will come. But the Holy Spirit will, like, tie you on and hold you fast to whatever the, is your faith or your expectation is to help you to stand through it because the storm is only going to be for a short time. Right. It ain't going to last forever. You're going to come through it, and you're going to come victor through it victoriously. I declare that in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, God won't let you down. Okay, I'm on the wrong side. I'm telling you, God won't let you down. Y'all hear me? If, you, if I can get you believing, things are going to start happening for you. And I, I receive that for me. All right? Now, now look with me real quickly. Look, look with me in second, uh, look at me in Proverbs 13 chapter. Proverbs 13. Hey, got to hurry up, Phil. Got to hurry up. Okay, Proverbs 13 and verse 14. Now, look what it says here in Proverbs 13, 14. It says, hope deferred. Hope deferred, or what? Expectation deferred maketh, and I put brackets around the word make it. Once you are, lose your expectation of good things happening for you, it maketh. Somebody say make it. Make it. it does what? Make it. it maketh. Look what it says. It maketh the heart sick. It maketh it sick to give up to lose heart, to get discouraged, to be depleted, polluted, contaminated, and, and all the negative things that happen. It, once you lose your expectation, see, and that, in fact, I'm saying right now, you, you, God never made you to live this life without living this life without expectation. In other words, you should be expecting every day when you get out to bed, I'm expecting something good to happen for me. I'm expecting God to do something big on my behalf. You should be expecting better things to happen for you. Come on, somebody. You should be expecting better things to happen for you than ever before. So I'm saying that this year, we just came out of seven years of drought, seven years of people of destruction and famine, and now... This year, 2015, is your year for harvest, for breakthrough, for increase, for abundance. This is your year, and I declare the next seven years is your year, and you better get ready for it. But you better start expecting it. Push your neighbor and tell them you better turn your expecting it on. I, I didn't say touch them. I didn't say touch them. I said push them. Tell them, get your expectation to own in Jesus' name. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm 65. I, in just a couple of months, I'll be 66. I, and I'm expecting to live strong and healthy. I'm expecting to have mobility all the days of my life. Uh, amen. I, I'm, I'm not planning on going down no time, to, no time soon and nothing like that. I'm expecting to live. And be strong and healthy and enjoy, enjoy Brenda. And I don't know what she's getting excited about. But anyway, enjoy. But also enjoy my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. 
I'm expecting to enjoy them. And I, I'm going to be around. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And I'm expecting you to be around. Yeah. All right, all right. Look what it says here. So hope that is deferred. Hope that is deferred. It, what it does, it maketh the heart sick. But when the desire or when that expectation cometh, somebody say cometh. It is a tree of life. Everybody going to get blessed off of you getting blessed. Off of that happening. But if you're not expecting something better to happen in life, if you're negative and you allow the world to keep you negative, you're never going nowhere. Amen. All right. So then this morning I talked about in the book of Genesis, the 13th chapter dealing with Abraham and how he said, told Abraham, he said, Abraham, after Lot was separated from him. And I said, you know, a lot of times in order for something to happen for you, sometimes you might need to make a change. And sometimes it's a change of association. Change of association. And uh, so I said, uh, and he said, after Lot was separated from him, the Lord spoke to him and said, Abraham, he said, look from the place where you are. And so I said this morning, in order for you to move ahead in life, you need to find out where you are. Be honest with yourself. Are you negative? Are, are you full of anger or bitterness? One lady come to me this morning, she said, when you said that, she said, I have so, been so angry at my husband. I've been wanting, he did this and he did that and I lost this and I lost that and I've been so bitter and so angry. But she said, when you said that, I decided to let my husband go because he's been holding me back. And I said, your husband hasn't been holding you back. You've been holding yourself back. So you can always find something to anchor yourself on in the negative to hold you back from your future. But listen to me, there's nothing so bad that happened to you, and believe me, I didn't hurt it all, that you can't pull yourself up with the power of God and start moving your life in a positive direction. Yeah. Yeah. That's why God wants you to have a spirit of expectation to believe him that he is the God of more than enough that he can show up on your behalf. So he says, Abraham, look from the place where you are. He said, northward, southward, eastward, westward. And he says, in everything that you can see, mm, mm, mm. everything that you can see. That's what he said. It's the Bible. Everything he said, for all the land which thou seest, yes. he said, to thee will I give it to you and to your seed forever. Praise the Lord. In other words, if I can start seeing good things, if I can start seeing God healing me, seeing God's blessing, seeing myself having a happy life, seeing myself being able to enjoy, see myself healed, see myself prosperous, see myself blessed, see myself walking, see myself uh, uh, doing whatever it is. Listen, man, when you, if you can see it, I know people don't like what I'm getting ready to say, but I'm just telling you, it's the Bible. He said, if you can see it, you can have it. You can have it. Are you waiting for God to answer your prayers? In Dr. Godot's message, Expecting Kingdom Manifestations, you'll learn that in order to receive from God, you must have a spirit and attitude of expectation. Everything that is in the Bible, if it's in the Bible, it's in the Word, and it has anything to do with the covenant or my rights or privilege, I'm expecting, come on, kingdom manifestation as you stand on god's word you should always expect he will fulfill his promises in your life god wants to fulfill your greatest desires but you must expect that he will first quit feeling sorry for yourself quit complaining and griping about what hasn't happened won't you just let the past be past expectation brings manifestation order your copy today won't you start believing for something big to happen for you? March Miracles has arrived in Sacramento. Calvary Christian Center presents five inspirational speakers to get you started this spring. Some uplifting speakers include Kenneth Copeland, Dr. Price, Marilyn Hickey, and others. They'll make appearances during the entire month of March. For more information concerning dates and details on March Miracles, just log on to our website at CavalryChristian.com. March Miracles has arrived in the capital city at Calvary Christian Center. See, see, I, you got to start seeing it. 
Because if you can't see it, you can't have it. So that's why he told Abraham, see from where you are. Abraham was in doubt, and he was going through a bunch of problems, and, uh, and he was just tripping. And uh, I think it was the 15th chapter of Genesis, and then God came back to him, Abraham uh, and said to Abraham, look up into the stars. He says, and see if you can number all those stars. Because I told you you were going to have a son, but your problem, Abraham, it's been 25 years and you still haven't got that son because you haven't really seen it yet. Until you can start seeing it. Then that says in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, and it says, and then he said, and then he be, uh, who against hope, the fourth chapter, who against hope believed in hope. Somewhere when he looked up there in them stars and saw all that God said, he said, so shall your seed be. So God is always trying to get you to Y'all, y'all too slow. No, see, y'all should have knocked that ball out the park. God is all, I, I even primed the pump for you. God is always trying to get you to see. Because if God can get you to see. see, he can get you to have what you start seeing. See, I, everything that God has done in my life, I started seeing it. I started believing. I started talking about it. My wife and I have been probably the most persecuted people in this whole city because of how we believe and because how we expect things. And people don't know and they don't understand the word. And so they talk about you versus trying to find out what the word says. But listen to me. Listen to me. When it comes down to the end of it, when you walk in the blessings, listen to me. Don't trip with those that don't know anything better. Just keep on driving your car, going where you got to go, doing what you got to do. So he says, Abraham, if you can see it, if you can see the stars and number them, he says, so shall your seed be. Amen. And then Abraham started believing that one day, uh, it, nothing had been going on in the tent. <laughs> Abraham, 100 years old, and Sarah's 90 years old. And one day, walking by the tent. And Sarah got a little finger out like that and says, And Abraham said, my Lord <laughs> and my God. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. Okay, okay. Now look with me in the book of Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, I think it is, Proverbs 22. He said to him, see, it's about what you're seeing. See, I see this church continually prospering. I see this church continually growing, continually having effects around the world. Uh, I see God continually blessing you. I see I'm praying for God to continue to manifest. But listen to me. I can't rise you above the level of your own expectation. If you don't start expecting it, I can't help you to get there. So I got to teach on this because God, if you can start expecting, some things are going to start happening for you. I just want to know, do I got anybody believing with me right now? See, if you see yourself sad, you're going to be sad. I tell you, I, I feel sorry for women because a lot of women who have been so broken and abused and taken advantage of, and then when they, they start trying to get their life together and they want to believe, understand what I'm saying? They're believing for a, a, somebody, a soulmate. They're believing for love in their life. And because uh, women are made, they just, they just love creatures. But a lot of them, because they gave their heart to somebody and then they broke their heart, they broke their trust, they destroyed them, and then they tried to get into another relationship, and, and something happened to them. So a lot of women have just been broken, and it's hard for them to move their life in a positive direction. But I'm telling you, don't give up. I'm telling you, there's a good man still out there waiting for you. And I'm telling you, keep believing for God to bless you. Somebody, God is going to bless you. Somebody said, who, me? I said, you. <laughs> who, me? Yes. Can you believe? You can receive. Amen. God bless me in Brenda's life. She believed for me. She saw me. Y'all ain't with me. Brenda saw me. She prayed for me. She believed for me. She, and when she told me what she was believing for, I said, no, that will never be in my life. She said, oh, well, well that's what I see. That's what I see. Am I right, Brenda? She told me. She said, I'm, I, I see a I'm going to have a preacher in my life. I'm going to have, and I'm going to, and he, I'm a minister and all that kind of stuff. I said, I'll never be that. Oh, no, I ain't going to never be that. Well, y'all see. Y'all see. Y'all see, she got what she wanted. I didn't see nothing. 
she saw it, she saw it. And, and so not through her trying to manipulate me or do anything, God just started bringing people and things into my life and brought me to that place because that girl was seeing her husband being in the place now. And then she said, now, but I didn't expect God to do this big a thing. <laughs> okay, are you in Proverbs 22? Yes. All right, I'm, I got to hurry up. Here we go, Proverbs 22 and verse 9. And it says, he that has a what kind of eye? A bountiful what? Eye. eye. Now, I told you to put brackets around that, a bountiful eye. Now, what is a bountiful eye? What is a bountiful eye? What is a bountiful eye? I'm talking to somebody in here. Think about it. What is a bountiful eye? Do you see? Because I'm always asking kids all the time. I say, I talk to them today. Every time I see a kid, teenager, I say, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? You're a teenager. You're in the, in the middle of your life growing up. What do you want to be? I think it's nothing worse than living a life without purpose. Well, you know, I don't know. So I told a kid told me today, 15 or, or 14, said, I don't know what I want to be. I said, well, you're pretty old not to know what you want to be. You should have some kind of purpose in your life. I said, there's other kids, you could ask them at five or six or, or so, and they said, what you want to be? Well, I'm going to be an attorney, or I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be an engineer, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going I'm, I'm to be, I'm gonna be a, a policeman, I'm going to be a fireman. I'm gonna, some, they, the kids just tell you, that nowadays, a lot of our kids nowadays, they, don't, they have no clue what they want to be. They're living a life without expectation. But when you start getting expectation in your life, listen to me. He that has a bountiful eye, a bountiful eye. What kind of eye is that? I'm asking you, think about it. What kind of eye is a bountiful eye? Because if you don't, listen to me, if you don't have a bountiful eye, you'll just be given to every spirit that's out there. See, the word bountiful eye means to move towards what you are looking at. See, when I start getting a bountiful eye, it moves me towards what I'm looking at. It moves me. Pastor Jordan, stand up. Step over there a little bit. Go that that way a little bit. So I have a bountiful eye. Man, you know what I want? I have a, I, I, I'm believing for me an iPad. <laughs> See, but I'm starting to believe for it. I'm expecting, I'm believing. Safe, safe as Christmas or birthday or or whatever, I'm believing for me an iPad, and I'm believing for me the newest one, and I want 64 megabytes or whatever, uh, gigabytes, some kind of byte. Yes. <laughs> Don't mess with me while I'm preaching, okay? Don't mess with me. <laughs> but see, what happens when I, I have a bountiful eye, it moves me. It moves you, because when you get a bountiful eye, you don't stand still. It moves you in the direction you want to go, and you start going towards what you believe for. If it's an education, a career, a business, huh? Whatever, a better life, a better wig, whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you. New teeth, come on, somebody. He that has a bountiful eye shall be what? Look what it says here. Look what it says here, Kendra. He that has a bountiful eye shall be blessed. Can you see the devil don't want you to have a bountiful eye? He don't want you to live a life of expectancy. Now that you've heard the word, I want you to accept Christ in your life. It's the greatest thing that can happen for you. So say this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now, if you did that, you've already, he's in your life. Thank God you have to do nothing else but just open your heart. If you did that, I'm in agreement with you. Write us, call us, email us, uh, text us, or go on uh, at Philip Godot, either Twitter or Facebook, and we are getting being back in contact with you. Love you, praying for you, move forth in your life. Are you waiting for God to answer your prayers? 
in Dr. Godot's message, Expecting Kingdom Manifestations, you'll learn that in order to receive from God, you must have a spirit and attitude of expectation. Everything that is in the Bible, if it's in the Bible, it's in the Word, and it has anything to do with the covenant or my rights or privilege, I'm expecting, come on, kingdom manifestation. As you stand on God's word, you should always expect he will fulfill his promises in your life. God wants to fulfill your greatest desires, but you must expect that he will first. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit complaining and griping about what hasn't happened. Won't you just let the past be past? Expectation brings manifestation. Order your copy today. Won't you start believing for something big to happen for you? March Miracles has arrived in Sacramento. Calvary Christian Center presents five inspirational speakers to get you started this spring. Some uplifting speakers include Kenneth Copeland, Dr. Price, Marilyn Hickey, and others. They'll make appearances during the entire month of March. For more information concerning dates and details on March Miracles, just log on to our website at CavalryChristian.com. March Miracles has arrived in the capital city at Calvary Christian Center. During March Miracles, we have several special events planned for you. You're invited to come out and immerse yourself in the spirit of praise as we honor God for His goodness and mercy during our night of worship. He really appreciates it because, as you know, He inhabits the praises of His people. It's a night of worship at Calvary. Plus, get your giggles and laughs on at our Laugh Out Loud Christian Comedy Night. Come experience how laughter truly makes a heart merrier. No serious faces allowed. It's time to get your funny on at our hilarious Laugh Out Loud Christian Comedy Night. For all of our March Miracles and other upcoming events, just log on to our website. These guys are at ground zero and they need everything. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever, whosoever, the hurting homeless are finding answers at Safe Haven Ministries in Sacramento. Their spiritual needs are being met. The presence of the Lord is here, man. Because homeless people don't have nowhere else to go. And we get the word at the same time. All right, God bless you. But their physical needs, such as food and other essentials, are becoming scarce. Hot? Yes. Our homeless ministry, supported by Calvary Christian Center, is in desperate need of the basics such as eating utensils, paper plates, and coffee cups. So we have to replenish those things. So we, we're on a really tight budget and we don't have a lot of finance. So I'm looking for partners that can help us uh, provide these things, build the kingdom of God, and meet the needs of the people here at the church. And we also need volunteers to help serve our friends. That's part of our job is to serve them. I think it's a very good um, program they have here. They look out for after a lot of people. It's those basic needs that bring the homeless to safe haven so that we can share the gospel. We had over 12 people to give their life to Christ today. And I'm excited about that. And the people are getting excited about it. They need your financial help to keep the lights on so we can continue reaching an underserved population. Anything else? Your financial gifts or time as a volunteer is appreciated. We are making a difference in our community. Don't forget, you can always learn more about us on the web. For the very latest ministry updates and news and to continue the conversation, you can find us on Facebook. So come on. Turn on your smartphone and tweet and post. Thank you, partners. This has been a Philip Godot Ministries broadcast.